it's no secret that flash animation is basically a bygone era at this point with html5 becoming much more prominent these days and for online video streaming and uh, interacting with elements on websites flash is basically obsolete at this point and websites like newgrounds have pretty pretty much taken the biggest brunt of the brunt of the hit when adobe got rid of it back in 2019 because it's just no longer profitable and it was no longer able to adobe to be able to sustain adobe flash at all so they got rid of it and classics like homestar runner and super mario bros z especially the earlier episodes of super mario bros, super mario bros z if you remember those they just can't be interacted with anymore so despite the fact that you can't uh view flash animations the way you used to you can still make them and you can thank a little the open source community for a little program called krita so you might be thinking to yourself hmm okay krita what about it well little do most people know krita can make flash animations using the ffmpeg libraries built into it so that's what today's video is going to be about let's take a very, very big deep and dirty dive into krita and use a section of the program that not a whole lot of people tend to use let's get into it so today's plugs of my socials are gonna be a little different today because I'm still not entirely sure what I'm gonna do for a schedule when it comes to streaming on Twitch, but I do have a Twitter and Discord. So if you'd like to take up on any updates about the channel or what's been going on in my life or whatever thoughts been going through my little aspy head, you can always check out my Twitter link to that will be down in the description. But if you'd also like to join a larger community at hand, um, there's some really fun people. Like we got some pretty, we got, we got a pretty nice server right now. It's not, not the most active thing in the world, but Got some real nice people there. If you want to have a chat and just sit around and chat, and when I'm not in my choice stream, you're more welcome to join it. Link to that will also be down below. So let's get into a little bit of background of, of Adobe that I like to usually like to get into. So for you who are, for use no for those who are Gen X or younger, Flash is basically nothing more than an API. A, an API just means application programming interface, which means it's just basically a set of tools that allows a programmer to build applications for a platform or whatever. And that's what Flash is. It's not. It's literally nothing more than a platform as an API. And but this API was very revolutionary when it first came out because, well, for one thing, HTML5 wasn't a thing back then. This was like late '90s, early 2000s. So, in order to get the effects or the results that you could get with Flash back then, you would have to build something completely different because nothing had existed at that point. Back when the Flash was first created, it was under the, uh, under a company called Macromedia. So if you were to think way back to the early days of Flash, like you were to love a Flash game or something like that, you would see the Macromedia logo. I'm sure a lot of you remember that logo because that was that was the first thing you see when you start to boot up a Flash game. And in 2005, Adobe purchased Flash entirely, the entire IP, right from Macromedia, and they retained ownership of it up until its its inevitable death in 2019. And that is really the most biggest background of, of the history you need to know of Adobe. It was first owned by Macromedia, bought by Adobe in 2005, who retained ownership until it's um, shut down in 2019. That is all you need to know about it. With history out of the way, we can start animating. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we have an FFM FFmpeg codec linked up to Krita. Now, depending on where you get Krita from, this is, will differ depending on where you, uh, on your platform. If you're on Mac OS or Windows, you should have it already linked up. On Linux, depending on your distribution and where you get it from, that can be that can be different. Uh, some versions of Krita, different Linux distributions can um, provide different versions of Krita in their package manager because it's, you got to remember on Linux, it's mostly community moderated. Uh, it's it's very rarely ever a, when a large company keeping a hold of things. So if you're on Manjaro, Arch, Ubuntu slash Debian, or Solus, you should have a uh, very much up-to-date version of Krita in your package manager. If you have anything older than 4.4.4.3, then you would have to link it up to Krita manually. Now, the version I'm using on my computer right here is running 4.4.3. Uh, so I don't need to link it up manually. It should already be in there as you install it. However, you do, the reason why we need the FFmpeg, FFmpeg codex is because Krita on its own is not able to play back any sort of video. Because that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be creating a video animation. Now, now you may, may not think flash animation as traditional uh, video, but that's basically what it is. It's just that you're creating it frame by frame rather than just putting things on a timeline and then smash it together. 
in a, an encoder. And as I create is not able to do that on its own. So that's why we need the FFM FFmpeg codex in order to basically get, get created the ability to play back the video we are going to be creating. Now, in order to now, I should probably um, mention the elephant in the room is that where do you get FFmpeg and how do you install it? Well, FFmpeg is, uh, you can get it from their website. There's the search up FFmpeg in Google, go to, the, it should be one of the very first results. Go to the website, download the binaries and binaries and what we're terming here, uh, referring to here is just a bunch of libraries and folders and files that give whatever you link it up to codecs to use. It's just basically, that's basically all FFmpeg is, it's just a bunch of codecs that basically give a program the ability to play back and uh, encode and decode video. That's all it really is. All right, so I'm in Krita and we're gonna create our, uh, our animation project like we would always would in Krita by creating just a pretty basic um, 1920 by 1080 image. So 1920 by width by 1080 height. Um, and keep it at the, res uh, the PPI resolution as, as always is. So when you obviously when you create the project, you would have like this very basic um, you know, empty project. It gives you all you know, your paint layer, your background layer, everything. But we don't want this workspace when it comes to animating Krita. So we're gonna go up to here to the workspaces collector, selector, go to animation, and then boom. Now it's, it's we're missing a um, a Docker that we're gonna want here. In fact, we're missing two. Uh, so we're gonna go to settings, Docker's animation curves, settings, uh, Docker's, and onion skins. I go over here to my other window and open this back up because it moves on the other window for some reason. All right, so there are going to be a few things you're going to want to know about this particular window. You got down here your keyframes, your onion skins, and down here in the other tab, the animation curves. We're going to pay attention to the ta to the timeline currently for right now. So, but first, as I mentioned before, if you do not already have FMMPEG installed, which I don't know why you shouldn't, you're going to need to link it up manually. And but you should already have it installed for the purpose of this video, so we'll not show that because it would take, basically this video would take forever if we were to show you the step-by-step -step of how to link up FFmpeg manually. So you should already have it installed. You should already have it, have it ready to go. So animating Krita is very basic and there are two terms you're gonna to wanna to know here. That is keyframe and motion tween. So a keyframe in, in animation in general just basically means like this is the beginning of a start of, of the beginning of a set of values and this is where the values are going to end. And we're going to fill in the space in between, which is also the term of a motion tween. A motion tween takes keyframes, two of them or more, and fills in the space in between. This makes the uh, tweens in general make animation very much more easier when it comes to making long animations that don't require hand by hand, frame by frame animation. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to stick to just a basic tween and a frame by frame animation. So to begin, we're going to want to add a keyframe. We're going to right click on our first keyframe, create blank frame. So now we have a frame already on the timeline, but it's undefined. It's completely empty, completely blank. So we're gonna to go to our um, tools, gonna to make a box here. We're gonna keep it as a color of red, around a red, and keep our, our size to 9.53 pixels. You can do this however you want. You can make even make a circle, you can make a penis, I don't care. <laughs> not, not, not to get, you know, unfriendly friendly, but I don't care what you do. As long as you have something that you can play with here, you're more than welcome to. Anyway. So we're gonna make our little box here. Boom, we have a box. Now, when I move it around, if I say we're moving to this other end, nothing's gonna happen because we don't have the keyframe at the end defined. So we're gonna move our box back here. I'm gonna move over here to our second keyframe, create duplicate frame, and move our box to the side. Okay, so we move the box to the side, but the problem is it just snaps to the other side. That's not exactly much of an animation as it is just moving the box to one side and immediately goes to the other end. So I'm going to get rid of that keyframe, go back to our first one, go back to our, excuse me, go back to our second keyframe, create another duplicate frame, but I'm gonna inch the box along a little bit. So the box has moved a little bit, but that's important. We're gonna to go to our next keyframe, create another duplicate, inch the box along again, create another duplicate, move the box along again. Doesn't matter if it's, it has to be precise or anything, just move the box along a little bit by a little bit until it gets to the other side of the screen. Again, it doesn't have to be precise. You even make it even a little bit larger jumps to get there a little quicker. Just keep doing it. Be nice and soft with it. Don't go too fast. 
And once you have it at the oh, once you have it at the other end, you can play it back. And there you go. It actually animates a little bit more. It's not perfectly smooth, of course. This that's the thing about frame by frame animations, is that it's not perfectly smooth. However, here's some here's a little bit of a bit of a tool that you might might find very 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 useful when it comes to frame by frame animations, and that is the onion skin. So we're gonna turn on our onion skins, and I need to figure out how to do that. One minute thirty seven seconds later. All right. So if you want to turn on onion skins, there is a button over here at the bottom. Right here, this little light bulb, click it. So what the onion skin does, and the onion skin is very useful. So what the onion skin does is that it shows you previous frames. It shows you the history and the future of what the animation is going to look like. And you can change the color down here of what you want. So if I want the uh, previous frames to be blue, and the next frames to be uh, that kind of that red, well, that doesn't look too good. How about more of yellow? There you go. You can change it what you want it to be. It just basically shows you the history and the, the history and the future of what the animation is going to look like. And as you move along with it, there's the previous frames, there's the previous frames in the in the next frames. The end of skins will help you keep track of what frames are going to look like previous and future. So the onion skin is a very, 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 very helpful tool that you're going to need to know about. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but we want to be a little bit more dynamic with our animation. So I'm going to hide this, create a new paint layer, make another box, and I'm going to add a blank, actually, nope, I did this wrong again. I'm going to add our blank frame and keep it in the center. So what we're going to do here, we're going to tween, uh, go to tween, uh, right click on our blank frame, go to tweening, add opacity frame, go to the other end, go back to tweening and add another opacity frame. And then I'm going to go to our, our animation curves. Now the animation curves is basically is, is, is the same thing as you'd find as animation curves in Premiere Pro, F After Effects, Apple Motion, Vegas Effects, Anything, anything you could think of, it's going to be the exact same basic concept. It is just a way to visualize and uh, visualize how the curves are going to work. So we're going to take our um, keyframe at the right end of the animation and drop it down. Just drop it down as low as, as low as, as to low enough that you can still see the box, but be able to, uh, but it, with just being there barely. If I go back to our timeline, oh, let me do that. There you go. The box just fades. Now, currently, right now in Krita, you can only fade with opacity with uh, motion tweening. It is the only way it's able to currently work in Krita. Now, the, that works out in Krita's favor because Krita is not really designed with uh, motion graphics in mind. This is the, the animation part. Really, it was more of an afterthought. Than anything but it's a very powerful afterthought regardless because you can actually animate things in ways that you really can't do in anything else that is the that is the great thing about flash animation is that you can animate frame by frame get things real precise real uh nitty gritty and make things look pretty good if you're good enough with it now i know this tutorial was very basic about it i know it was, it was just a box nothing more but I want you to get you familiar with the basics of animating in Krita so you can actually go out in the real world and practice it for yourself. Now, if you would like me to, I'd love to make more videos on this type of subject in the future because this is this is actually a pretty cool thing to do and I'd like to expand on it and get a little bit better at, a little bit better at it myself and see what really can be done with animation in Krita. So if you'd like to see more of these videos, then be sure to sound off in the comments below. Otherwise, if you like the video, then be sure to give it a like and I guess dislike it if it works too. I don't know. Helps me in engagement. So whatever you do, it helps me. And uh, if you'd like to see more from the channel, be sure to subscribe with the notifications on. Really can't say that enough. So thank you for joining this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later.